What is up, guys? This is the Osimo.com early MLB preview podcast. This is Jake Hari, a writer for Osimo.com. Uh, you may know me from uh, the MLB strategy video that I do with Josh Engelman. Um, so we're going to do this quick podcast discussing the MLB slate, try to get one out for you guys on the weekdays and just sort of talk through the slate for you early commuters or maybe people that just want to listen to it a little bit earlier in the morning. Um, so let's get into this 11-game slate. It looks like DraftKings has a pretty small um, pretty small like four-game slate for these early weird start times. There are some weather concerns with them in the Chicago-Cleveland game and in the Twins-Yankees game. So I'm not going to talk too much about them. There's some showdown slates. Um, Haven't really gotten into showdown too much, but um, we're just going to talk about this 11-game slate. I'm going to take you through, just go quickly game by game and try to make this as short and concise as possible. Um, As always, make sure to check out our rankings and stacks article, spotlight hitters, spotlight pitchers, um, spotlight stacks, and we've got a bunch of good content coming out for you guys, so... It's going to be a good MLB season. It already has been, and I hope it has been for you and you've been enjoying these live streams. Um, let's get into this MLB slate. 11 games. We're going to start with the 705 Eastern game, and that will start with Tampa Bay and Baltimore. We've got Jacob Feria going. Um, a lot of hard contact for him early in the season, and that sort of scares me in terms of wanting to use him. Um, I read the plate discipline stats on the podcast or on the, the morning podcast with Josh um, about the plate discipline numbers for Baltimore, but I'm not really too interested in Faria. Um, really no interest in Alex Cobb on the other side. Um, for Baltimore Bats, I do like Manny Machado. Um, Adam Jones is a decent value at 4000 on DraftKings, and most of these prices that I'll be referring to are DraftKings, so just keep that in mind. Josh is more of the FanDuel guy, so... We'll have more information, more geared towards FanDuel tomorrow morning. Um, And this is, so Tuesday morning, I should say. Um, All right, so Baltimore Bats, I like Machado Jones. If Pedro Alvarez is in the two hole, I think that's all right as well. It doesn't look like a great stack to me. The Baltimore Bats don't, but I could certainly see some some one-offs here. Cobb just cannot miss any bats, and he's getting crushed by both-handed hitters. The problem is the Rays aren't really... Um, all that interesting for DFS. I can see playing a CJ Cron or a Carlos Gomez or Brad Miller one-offs, but the Rays are certainly not a team I want to stack. This one also has some weather concerns, so you're going to have to keep an eye on that as the day goes on. Detroit and Pittsburgh. Let me find this game on my sheet. All right, we got Jordan Zimmerman going up against Chad Cool. Zimmerman has a 41.2% hard contact rate. 24.7 K rate, 24.7% K rate. Um, I don't really believe in that K rate for Zimmerman. He got pounded by Cleveland, had some success against Baltimore and the White Sox. Pittsburgh is one of the most patient teams in the MLB, though, so I think Zimmerman could get lit up pretty nice here if this game goes. There is a 50% chance of rain right now. So this is another one you're going to have to keep your eye on. A bunch of these early games have weather concerns. Looks like on the East Coast, it, there's going to be pretty big, um, pretty big storm going through there in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, and so should be a fun day of weather tomorrow after a nice day today. Uh, for Pittsburgh bats, I do like the top five really. So Fraser Polanco, Starlin Marte, Josh Bell, and Corey Dickerson, and then Colin Moran at three thousand on DraftKings, I think makes for a really awesome value. This guy looks like he's going to be a pretty good hitter. He's already hit righties really hard so far in his MLB career. Um, so I think you can definitely stack up the Pirates. One of my favorite stacks of the night, assuming this game is going to play. But since we're so far out, it's hard to it's hard to um, sort of make an assumption of what's going to play and what's not. Cool has been okay, but under an 8.5% swinging strike rate in all four of his starts this year. So I don't really look to target pitchers that don't get a lot of swinging strikes, especially on a big slate like this. So no cool for me, but he is 6,900. That is a pretty decent price for someone that's 
a nice favorite. I'm assuming Josh is going to like him tomorrow on the early podcast. Um, but I guess we shall see. Uh, it's tough to play pitchers in these tough weather games, but um, not a ton of pitching options I like tonight. So a $6,900 player that's currently a minus 160 favorite isn't the worst play in the world. On the Tigers' side for bats, I think that Castellanos would be a guy that I'm looking at. And then Miguel Cabrera has hit the ball really, really hard this entire season. So that's always a, a good sign. And then Candelario for 3,600. Not a very known player yet, but he's a switch hitter. He's 3,600. I think that that's a pretty decent price for a third baseman here tonight. All right, let's get out of that game. Arizona and Philadelphia, another game with some weather concerns. I mean, I'm, I'm looking to play Robbie Ray here. It's a pretty tough matchup, actually, though, against the Phillies. You don't really always have to worry about matchups with Robbie Ray because his K stuff is so, so good when he's on, especially. But the Phillies do have a bunch of guys that can hit lefties really well, like Reese Hoskins, Aaron Althair, Carlos Santana, Michael Franco. So these guys are not going to be a cakewalk for Robbie Ray. And when he gets hit, he gets hit really, really hard. It is a little bit concerning that he's not favored here. It's, it's more of a push with Vince Velasquez on the other side. So a little bit concerning, but I think he can rack up enough Ks at 11,000 that I'm at least willing to consider him here at this early look. Um, for Philadelphia bats, uh, when Ray gets hit, he, he does get hit really hard, as I said. So I wouldn't want to necessarily full-on stack because I don't think he gets lit up here. But a Reese Hoskins for 5100 will be pretty contrarian. Carlos Santana for 3600 is is fine. Um, Michael Franco for 3500 that would be an all right play with me. But but mostly it's just Hoskins if you're looking to get a little bit contrarian and you're not looking to play Ray. Velasquez, I'm really not interested in playing here. I think he might be a trendy sleeper if the weather looks okay here, or a trendy uh, GPP play. And I'm not really looking to be on Vince Velasquez if he's going to be any sort of popular. Daniel Descalso and Alex Avila batting five and six again. It feels like I talk about them every time they're facing a righty, but can't argue with the hard hit numbers. So those would be the two guys I like. Uh, Goldschmidt and Pollock are a bit expensive for my liking here. I do have some respect for Velasquez. Um, but, I mean, I, at, at the same token, I can also see him getting blown up. It wouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world. Again, this is another one with some weather concerns. So that is frustrating because there are, well, at least Ray is a guy that I'm looking at. But I don't really want to play Velasquez. So um, just keep an eye on that weather all around the East Coast. Boston and Toronto. We've got Rick Porcello um, against J.A. Happ. Porcello has limited the hard contact well this year. The game marks look good, but I just can't get behind really playing Rick Porcello for 9,500 against a team that I do have some respect for in the Toronto Blue Jays. Porcello is a slight favorite as we speak. This is a game that can be indoors um, Blue Jays, um, you don't have to worry about weather there unless their, their roof is leaking again, which I'm pretty certain that's not going to happen twice in a year, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, the Toronto bats I like are Smoke and Teoscar Hernandez. Teoscar Hernandez, this guy has just been raking, and apparently he's just the best player in the MLB right now. This guy just seems to be hitting everything out of the park He's 3,200 on DraftKings. I think he makes for a fine play against Porcello. Porcello is sort of a, a neutral spit, splits pitcher, at least it was last year. Um, Solarte is fine if he's in the lineup at 3,700. Um, Granderson right at the top, under 4K leading off. That's always going to pique my interest against a righty. J.A. Happ on the other side. Um, I don't really want to use him here. But I don't really think I want to fire up a, a Red Sox stack either. Hap's been really good. And um, I think people think he's like the old J.A. Hap and he's, he's going to get blown up. Or, But I do think he's made some strides. I think he's a better pitcher. His swinging strike, rates, swinging strike rate is up. His whiffs are up. And those are two things I love. If you listen to the early podcast with me and Josh, 
So those are two stats I will reference basically on every pitcher that I'm considering using or for reasons that I'm not considering using certain pitchers. So I think one-offs are fine against Hap, but I'm not really going out of my way to target him. Uh, Mookie Betts and Hanley Ramirez and J.D. Martinez are all super expensive, mostly uh, Martinez and Betts, but those are the hitters I like. And considering I don't love the idea of stacking against Hap, I probably won't really end up with, with too many of them here. Oakland and Texas. Uh, Andrew Triggs versus um, Cole Hamels. This is in Texas. It's good hitting weather. Let's talk about Triggs for a second. His velocity is trending downward, and so that's a red flag for me right away. He's getting hit hard by lefties this year, only a 2.2% swing strike rate in his last start against the White Sox, which is very concerning. The White Sox are a team that, against righties, you should be getting a lot of swings and misses, especially if you're supposed to have decent stuff like Triggs is supposed to. But his fastball is down 2 miles an hour since opening day. The sinker is down 2.5 miles per hour. The cutter is down 1.5 miles an hour. So a lot of red flags there for Triggs. And if I think a pitcher is something, I think something's wrong with Triggs, which I think there might be something going on with him, then I'm looking to stack Rangers against him. And, I mean, I like stacking, or I like playing pitchers against the Rangers as much as the next guy. Like, I played Cahill last night, been riding pitchers against the Rangers all season. But this is not a place, this is not a um, a night where I want to use Triggs. Um, so I love Gallo, Mazzara, Beltre, Chu, like all these guys. Texas, one of my favorite stacks of the night. They have a 4.7 run total right now, and I'll talk about them more with Josh tomorrow morning. But um, just a little preview, I do like the Rangers quite a bit um, on Tuesday. Cole Hamels on the other side. Um, I just really can't figure him out. He keeps getting hit hard and sort of surviving. This should be a spot where he could get blown up, and there are a lot of righties. He's got a 44% hard hit rate against righties. Um, as far as the A's bats go, because I don't want to use Cole Hamels, maybe people are souring on the A's bats because they didn't do enough on Monday night, but um, I do like all the A's bats here. Piscotti, Semyon, Lowry, Davis, um, even Matt Olson, lefty-lefty, I, I don't mind that. Matt Chapman, I love him for 4,100. Really, all these guys are in play for me. They're all guys that crush lefties. And at some point, I don't think Hamels is going to survive this hard hit rate. And I think he's going to get blown up. And that certainly could be against a team like the A's in a good park, in good weather. And yeah, they might swing and miss a lot. But I could also see them putting quite a few in the seats tonight. Um, let's go to the next game. Angels and the Astros. Looks like it's going to be Shohei Otani versus Charlie Morton. The Astros have a 4.7 run total against Otani. I know it's at home for the Astros. Otani had a rough outing against Boston in his last start, but that's Boston, and that was before they got no hit by Sean Manaya, which is crazy. Um, that's a topic for another day, I suppose, but I'm ready to give Otani a pass for that. Like He's somewhere in between that and what we saw his first couple starts. I think he's going to be a really good pitcher. I think he already is one of the better pitchers in the MLB. The Astros are really tough, and you're not getting a discount really on Otani. He's 9,900 on DraftKings. Uh, there are, it's a bunch of righties at the top of the order for Houston, but still righties that don't really strike out against right-handed pitching. So I'm not really looking to use Otani here. I get it if it's super contrarian. It is a discount on a guy like Morton who he's facing, but I just don't really see the K upside, and there are a lot of bats that um, that scare me on Houston just in general, even against a guy like Otani. The Astros bats. So this is what I want to do really with the Astros bats. Like if something's wrong with Otani and I, I didn't check on his velocity just yet or how his movement's doing and stuff like that, or if it was just a bad start against Boston, which it certainly could have been. But um, if he's on, like he could easily have a really nice outing here against Houston, go six or seven innings. If he's off, I think he could get lit up here. Like any any pitcher that's off or 
you know, dealing with, with something that's nagging um, could certainly get lit up, especially like a team, especially against a team like Houston. So I would either want to like full stack Houston or really just take no batters and, and hope Otani's okay and just sort of this game stays quiet offensively. But more information on that hopefully tomorrow. We can see what Osmo says. We can see what Josh has to say on the podcast tomorrow morning. Uh, Morton, I'm sort of at the same place with him as I am with Otani. I think I'm more likely to play Morton on DraftKings, even though he's $1,300 more. He's 11-2 on DraftKings, but I think he's a really good pitcher. This is one of the toughest teams to pitch against. They have the lowest swinging strike rate in all of the MLB, the Angels do, so I don't really love it here, even though Morton has an over 14% swinging strike rate in each start this year. So I wish the weather was nice where... Robbie Ray was pitching, but I do have some interest in Morton regardless of whether Ray looks like he's going to pitch through the whole game or what. Um, so I don't really love bats in this game outside of a super contrarian Houston stack, and that would be something I would be doing if I'm making 150 lineups or, or 10 lineups. You, you have one Houston stack, but I don't think it's going to be popular at all. Mets... Mets Cardinals. Um, Steven Matz has a 30% K rate this year, but a 7.4% swinging strike rate. He's not really getting any whiffs. Uh, he's got a 211 Babbitt, so I think he's a bit of a fraud right now. Um, and I love the St. Louis Bats here. I love the stack. Jose Martinez, one of my favorite plays of the entire night, as well as Ozuna, Tommy Pham, if he's in the lineup, Dexter Fowler, um, Yadi Molina. Like, they are just. Um, they just all seem like they're in good spots individually, and I, I think Matt is a bit of a fraud. He's also really bad at holding on runners. So Tommy Pham for 4700 it looks expensive, but he's definitely a guy that can steal base. Dexter Fowler, super underpriced. Um, so I'm all over this Houston stack, really one through seven, stopping at Paul DeJong. Um Jared Weaver, he's been disappointing this year. Jared Weaver. Um, yeah, he's been pitching more like Jared Weaver this year. No, he's not. He's he's good. Um, but he, he's been a little bit disappointing. He's not really getting the swing and misses we saw last year. So I think I'm out on him until further notice. But I will say, like just looking at Vegas, he's a minus 165 favorite. He's 7,500 on DraftKings. I think he's going to be popular. Um I mean, the Mets have some strikeouts in their lineup, especially against righties. So I, I get it if you want to play Weaver. But if he's going to be super chalky, it's good weather here for hitting relatively good weather. I think that Conforto and Asdrubal Cabrera and then Jay Bruce for some reason is 3,600. I think all those guys make sense as leverage bats, especially if Weaver is going to be chalky. But more, more on him tomorrow. I want to see where he comes up in Osmo's rankings and sort of how chalky he just might be. 7,500. Milwaukee and Kansas City last few games here. Um, I'm not interested in either of the pitchers here, so let's just get that out of the way. Uh, I do want to stack against Ian Kennedy. He's got a 42% hard contact rate, not missing any bats, and he's not getting ahead of any guys. So that's a really, really bad combo. I think the Brewers could crush him here, um, even though it's, it's not a great park. But this lineup has a bunch of power, as we know. I love Christian Yelich here. Yelich is 4700 I'm more than willing to pay that price for him. I really love Shaw and Thames as well. Shaw is underpriced at 4000 He crushes righties, especially righties that give up a lot of hard contact. He's got an over 40% hard contact rate against righties since the start of last year. So I love... Uh, Yelich, Shaw, Thames, so all of the lefties, and then Lorenzo Cain and Braun can definitely be thrown in there as a stack. Kennedy's a guy that's got a tendency to get lit up, and that's a big run total already for the Brewers at 4.6 in a below average hitters park. So that is really, really encouraging for a Brewers stack that, that I like quite a bit. San Diego and Colorado. This is a Coors Field game. We've got Eric Lauer, it looks like. This may change. It was undecided when I checked a little while ago, so I don't really know who's going to start for San Diego or if it's going to be a bullpen game. But if this is 
going to be Eric Lauer, a lefty, going up against this Rockies lineup. I don't know how you don't stack up LeMahieu, Chris Iannetta, uh, Nolan Arenado, Trevor Story, even Blackman against a lefty in a lefty-lefty matchup. I don't really care. I think um, they could light this guy up in Coors. The weather's not great. It's only 45 degrees there tomorrow, it looks like. But And by tomorrow, I mean today, but I am recording this at night. Um, the night before Tuesday, which would be Monday, of course. So, got to get my day straight for you guys listening to this, if you're listening in the morning or whatever. But, I do like all the Colorado bats. If Ionetta's batting second and he's 3,500 against a lefty, that is such a, such a good play. Um, Ionetta crushes lefties, did all last year, has been early this year. And then we know about, like, Arenado and Story and... LeMahieu, they can all hit lefties really, really well. So it's really those top five for Colorado. On the San Diego side, well, let me talk about Kyle Freeland quick. I'm not really a huge fan of stacking against Freeland, even in Coors. He seems like he kind of knows how to pitch in Coors. As weird as that sounds, he he's just not a guy I love to stack against because when he's on, he's just getting a ton of ground balls. Not giving up hard contact. However, I think there are some Padres bats that we can pick and choose. So I think you take one or two Padres bats. I don't think you take the full stack here. I like Perella. And then Villanueva was out. He was scratched on Monday. So I think Perella and Will Myers would be my two favorite guys. Perella for 40, for 4,300 is a really, really nice play. And then... Villanueva if he's in the lineup, but I don't really know his status right now. So, let's go to Miami and L.A. L.A. Dodgers. Uh, Dylan Peters is not really missing a lot of bats, and that's, to put it nicely, the Dodgers have been much better as of late in terms of their hitting. I think he could get roughed up pretty good here tonight. So, Peter's obviously a lefty. These Dodgers already have a five-run total. Wow. I bet that even goes up by the time you are listening to this. So, I love Chris Taylor for 3,700. Kike Hernandez is only 3,400. Matt Kemp, 3,600. Puy doesn't hit lefties as well. Um, but there's no real reason that he shouldn't. So, maybe that was just a last year thing. I'll have to check on that. But I like Puy. I really like the top six for L.A., and I think they're going to be pretty popular, but I'm fine using them at home. It's not a great park, but it is looking like really good weather, around 70 degrees. Um, so Dodgers stack definitely up in the, the top five for me. I don't know if they're like my favorite stack, but you can't really argue with those prices. Those are some really good prices on DraftKings especially. Kenta Maeda is not really a guy that I'm a fan of, but... Man, I just, it seems like I never use him. And I'm a one lineup guy, so I try to use pitchers that I really, really like. And Maeda's not one that I'm super crazy about. Um, he's 9,300, so I you can get it. I mean, the swinging strike rate looks pretty good. The O swing percentage has looked good in a couple of his starts. The results have been not great he's had two games with 10 strikeouts but under six innings in both of them so he's just a guy that's not really gonna go deep which concerns me this marlins lineup has been tough against pitchers lately and i've talked about it a bunch on the the early pod but they just kind of been pesky and getting studs out pretty early so the price isn't bad for maeda i certainly get the play maybe i'll be higher on him tomorrow closer to lock but as of now I'm not really so crazy about him despite the 3.1 run total for the Marlins. Last game of the night, Washington and San Francisco. Tanner Roark has been really good against righties, over a 24% K rate against them. He's not really going to overpower anyone, probably not going to strike out a bunch of guys. But he is 8,200, and it's a lineup with guys like McCutcheon and Posey and, and Longoria. Those are the guys that you're really scared of in this this uh, Giants lineup 
but he can really get all those guys out. He's he's really good against righties. He strikes them out at a decent clip, and you're not really worried about power too much in this park. So it's not really pretty. I hate playing Tanner Roark, but on this slate, I think it makes a little bit of sense under four run total for San Francisco right now. So I think I'm more on Roark than the San Francisco bats. There's just not really anyone I like from the left side on San Fran. So I'm going to pass there. Ty Block is a lefty soft tossing. Um, he's a soft tossing lefty going up against these Nats bats. Trey Turner leading off for 4,500. I'm not, I'm not crazy about it just because he hasn't really been hitting all that well. But Howie Kendrick for 3,200. Really like that price. Ryan Zimmerman for 4,000. Michael Taylor for 3,500. Uh, those are all guys that I really have interest in. The only thing really holding me back from them at this point is the ballpark. And now if, if a couple games start getting rained out and you can pay up for guys like Harper, then I would have even more interest because I'm obviously not scared of playing Harper in any lefty-lefty matchup, especially against a guy like Ty Black, who's not going to make you miss. So that was a quick look at the 11-game slate. Hope I got through that pretty quick. We have a play line contest coming up um, that we'll, we will talk more about on, um, on the podcast tomorrow uh, the MLB strategy video and that will be on April 25th so that would be Wednesday and it's called the Osmo.com presents one million dollar perfect line bonus 2500 guaranteed and yeah it should be a fun contest so sign up for that and we're excited to get some more content out hopefully we can make this a regular thing and would love to hear some feedback about this podcast um, and look for us tomorrow morning on the MLB Strategy Podcast. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening. Check out Osmo's rankings. Check out the Spotlight Stack, Spotlight Hitters, Spotlight Pitchers tomorrow morning. Um, good luck in your DFS games on Tuesday, April 24th.